Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praises to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rachachachwarash. Double honors to the apostles, the bishops, and the elders at Great Millstone who rule well. Peace and salutations as always to the elect. I just wanted to go over this uh, scripture um, that um, a lot of people use, and ultimately they use it out of context. And I just wanted to go into it in a little history so that uh, you brothers and sisters can get understanding of it. And a lot of people pull this scripture out, you know, when they're, um, you know, making the argument that uh, Israelite man can't have heathen women. And ultimately, um, we're not supposed to make marriages with the heathen women. All right. Heathen are supposed to be concubines. All right. Now, what is the difference between a wife and a concubine? All right, now this is just gonna get us uh, straight to the point. I've done a video on this topic before, so I'll probably reload that if someone wants edification on it. But um, the position of a concubine was generally inferior to that of a wife, all right? When you uh, make a marriage, again, it's supposed to be between you and an Israelite woman, an Israelite wife. That's who you're supposed to take as a wife and join the houses together. That's what a marriage is. All right. And for purposes of inheritance and everything else, that will be done in particular with an Israelite woman. All right. But in heathen. All right. Was supposed to come up under you as a concubine, meaning she put off all of her gods. Um, she ultimately will have time to mourn, you know, the loss of her parents and she will come up under you and help your estate. All right. But she would be inferior to that of. A Hebrew Israelite wife. All right. It says the position of a concubine was generally inferior to that of a wife, although a concubine could produce heirs. All right. And generally those heirs would not have the um, privileges, you know, as, you know, the, uh, the wife of a uh, Israelite concubine, though the Heavenly Father has always, you know, input his authority over the technicalities of the law and many times in our history. All right. Her children would be inferior in social status to a wife's children, although they were of a higher status than illegitimate children. So, you know, in a nutshell, you know, a wife and a concubine do differ. All right. And uh, ultimately, when we go into this uh, scripture here, this is what a lot of people bring out. This is Deuteronomy 7 and 3. This is uh, as we were uh, entering into the land of Canaan, all right, which is the land of Israel. There were uh, nations in that land, all right, in particular, these seven different nations that are associated with this command. This is Deuteronomy 7 and 3. Neither shall thou make marriages with them. Thy daughter thou shalt not give unto thy son, nor his daughter unto, uh, shall thou take unto thy son, for they will turn away thy son from following me, all right, that they may serve other gods. So will the anger of the Lord be kindled against you and suddenly destroy thee. So a lot of people bring this out. But when you read this, all right, when you go to verse one, this is speaking of seven particular nations that were in the land of Israel. Now, remember, the book of Deuteronomy is a reintroduction all right, of the law to the Israelites after the uh, 40 years where that wicked, rebellious generation, you know, fell off. But this was already told to the Israelites in the book of Exodus, the 34th chapter. All right. And we can start at, let's just go there and we can start at, um, let's see here. And this is actually uh, the reintroduction of the covenant as well. But as you can see, um, Exodus 23, 14, uh, and so forth. But uh, the Lord said this here in Exodus 34 and 11, observe. Thou that which I command thee this day before behold, I drive out before thee the Amorite, the Canaanite, the Hittite, the Perizzite and the Hivite and the Jebusite. And these are all sons of Canaan. These all ultimately these are all fulfilled in Canaanites. Take heed to thyself, lest thou make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land, whither thou goest, lest it be for a snare in the midst of thee, because ultimately these Canaanites were doing some very, very wicked and evil practices that would have been a snare unto the souls of the Israelites. All right. Now, I always make this uh, argument, you know, today. All right. If we're going to make this argument. All right. Which women. 
all right, push Israelite men to follow after other gods more, all right, than Israelite women, okay? Again, I'm not doing a lesson pushing, you know, get you, you know, look, look at the end of the day, you do what you do, all right? I'm into Israelite women, but I see this uh, verse be misused all the time, okay? But it's the Israelite woman that is a danger to our men for following other gods. Who's telling our Israelite men to go to the church, all right, uh, uh, worship Jesus, go to the Catholic church, you got to be of this, that. It's it's not the heathen women so much, all right? So should we, uh, you know, warn not to deal with the Israelite woman? <laughs> well, in certain cases, that is a good idea. But the bottom line is here in Deuteronomy 7 and 1, all right, I'm not doing this video, to, you know, as no back and forth between what women you should deal with. The bottom line is that a lot of people, when they're making the argument of do uh, uh, of this uh, whole thing, they use Deuteronomy seven and three. Neither shall thou make marriages with them. Thy daughter shall thou not give unto his son, nor thy daughter. All right, shall thou take unto thy son. All right, and this is speaking of when you read verse one, when the Lord God shall bring thee into the land, whether thou goest to possess it, and have cast out many nations before thee the hittite the girgashite the amorite the canaanite the perizzites the hivites the jebusites seven nations mightier than uh than thou and when and when yahweh thy god shall deliver them before thee thou shalt smite them and utterly destroy them thou shalt make no covenant with them nor show them mercy all right and this fulfills uh when you get uh the the book of uh Genesis, the, I believe, ninth chapter. All right, this fulfills Genesis 9 and 25. And he said, cursed be Canaan. All right. A servant of servants shall he be unto his brethren. All right. And this was, um. and he said, blessed be the Lord God of Shem and Canaan shall be his servant. All right. And that, that was fulfilled here in Deuteronomy, all right, where Israel didn't, you know, take heed to the uh, commandment to utterly destroy them, all right, which was a part of that curse, but the Canaanites became servants, all right, to the Israelites, all right, but that's a whole nother lesson for a whole nother time, but as you can see here in Deuteronomy, the seventh chapter is speaking of these seven nations, all right, that were in the land of Canaan, or which really is the land of Israel, before we got in there, all right, we were to utterly destroy them, all right, verse 7 in the NLT says, when the Lord God hands these nations over to you, and you conquer them, you must completely destroy them, make no treaties with them, and show them no mercy, you must not intermarry with them, nor lead your daughters and sons to marry their sons and daughters, for they will lead your children away from me to worship other gods. Then the anger of the Lord will burn against you and will quickly destroy you. All right. And Jake did not follow this order. <laughs> All right. They did not follow this order. This is what you must do. You must break down their pagan altars and shatter their sacred pillars, cut down their Asherah poles and burn their idols. For you are a holy people who belong to the Lord your God, of all the people on the earth, the Lord God has chosen you to be his own special treasure. So, all right, to get more history on this, let's get the book of Wisdom of Solomon, the 12th chapter, all right, and the third verse, the sins of the Canaanites. You hated the people who lived in your holy land long ago because they did horrible things. They practiced magic and conducted unholy worship. All right, so after the flood, pretty much it was the sons of Ham that continued that that evil, wicked sorcery practice that the serpent practiced, you see? And the Hamites, all right, continued that legacy in the earth, all right? And then the Edomites got it from them, you see? But the Lord wanted to eradicate, all right, their ways of worship out of the earth. So he told us to eradicate them, you see? They killed children without mercy and ate flesh and blood of human beings. And when you look at the culture that runs the world today, okay, it, it stems from these Hamites. 
It's just that the Edomites, that's why it's called a spiritual Sodom in Egypt. The Edomites pretty much hijacked, all right, all the pra pagan practices of these heathen, these Hamites, and now they've taken it and went worldwide with it, okay? They're the ones that are doing all of these things now. Not that the Hamites stop, all right? But it's Esau now who is ultimately in this stead. It says they they were inflated, initiated into secret rituals in which parents murder their own defenseless children. And this is all happening today. It was your will for our ancestors to destroy these people so that the land which you consider the most precious of all lands would be suitable, would be a suitable home for your people. But even in this, you show mercy towards their enemies because you gave them time. Since they were only human beings, you sent horn you sent hornets instead of your army. The Lord drove them out little by little to destroy the enemy gradually. You could have allowed the righteous to destroy those ungodly people in battle. You could have wiped them out immediately with wild animals or with one harsh command. But instead, you carried out your sentence gradually for prophecy to play out to give them a chance to repent even though you knew that they came from an evil stock that they had been wicked since birth and that they would never change their way of thinking all right things have to play out all right their whole nation was cursed from the start as this, we just read curse be canaan right and though you had not punished them for their sins it was not because you were afraid of anyone all right so that, that goes into that history. So when we're reading this, okay, and people bring this scripture out, this was applied to these various different nations here, all right, in Deuteronomy, the seventh chapter, that were in the Holy Land before the Israelites went to take it as an inheritance, all right? Now, as they were con conquering these different nations, let's get Deuteronomy, the 21st chapter, there is a law, all right, on how to deal with, with the rest of the heathen outside of these heathen nations. And it's right here. Deuteronomy 21 and 10. When thou goest forth to war against thine enemies, and the Lord thy God have delivered them into thine hands, and thou hast taken them captive, and thou seest among the captives a beautiful woman, and would have a desire unto her that thou wouldest have her to thy wife, then thou shalt bring her home into thine house, and she shall shave her head because the heathen, all right, uh, women in their hair were, were tied to idols as well as their nails and pair her nails because basically she's putting off her idols. All right. Just like Ruth said. And uh, let's get Ruth. The uh, see Ruth. Here in Ruth, uh, the first chapter. Where, you know, Naomi was basically telling Ruth to go back amongst her people. You know, uh, Ruth was loyal. All right. Let's see here. And Ruth said this. And Ruth said, entreat me not to leave thee or to return from following after thee. For whether thou goest, I will go. And where thou lodgest, I will lodge. Thy people shall be my people and thy God, my God. See, this is how the, 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 the heathen women are supposed to be when you deal with them. This is supposed to be their mindset. And see, what happened with Israel in times past is as they were making, all right, uh, uh, you know, taking these women in, they were treating them as wives in the sense that they weren't telling them to put their gods off. They were what? Joining their houses along with the houses of these heathen, all right? And these heathen were allowed to what? Forward their gods. OK, so here. All right. Verse 12, it says, then thou shalt bring her home. Deuteronomy 21 and 12. To thine house and she shall shave her head and pare her nails. And she shall put off the raiment of her captivity. From off her and she shall remain in thy house. And bewail her father and mother a full month because she lost them in the war. The only reason she's being gathered up and taken is because an Israelite man saw her fit to be brought into his house as a wife after they conquered and destroyed these nations. This is a law the Lord gave us, all right, on how to handle dealing with these nations. Now, we were commanded not to make any marriages 
all right, with the, the, the Canaanites, any league, nothing, all right, but as for the other nations that were around about, all right, this was the order, all right, if you do take one of them, all right, basically, she's going to have to put away her idols and, 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 you know, take away everything that was good to her, bewail her mother and her father a full month, and afterward, thou shalt go in unto her and be her husband, and she shall be thy wife, but it wouldn't be a wife in a sense, all right, of a Hebrew Israelite wife, it would be a concubine, all right, and many of our, our, our fathers had concubines, all right, the ones who multiplied in wives and concubines were really the kings, all right, King David, all right, he had wives and concubines, but he did it in order, it was King Solomon, amongst many other men in our, our culture, who pretty much did it out of order to where they started to allow these heathen women to continue their gods, okay so ultimately this is a law as a matter of fact i have it pulled up here all right this is john gill deuteronomy 21 and 11 all right and thou wouldest have her to be thy wife to be married unto her in a legal manner for though it was not allowed all right for the israelites to marry any of the seven nations of canaan nor indeed with any other nations continuing in their idolatry. see when you take on a concubine, a concubine was to put off her adultery and understand that I am now worshiping your God. Okay? So, again, stop using this scripture in Deuteronomy, the seventh chapter, to say we can't deal with heathen women. All right? That is being used out of context, and it's been used out of context for some time now. Okay? Now, again... All right. The marriages that we make were supposed to be with Israelite women. Israelite women are supposed to be superior to the heathen women. All right. And inheritance rights and how they're treated and what they have access to. All right. The heathen woman would just pretty much be a servant to help you and your wives. OK. And also for your pleasure when you wanted to go in on tour. All right. It says this continuing in our adultery yet they might marry such as became their captives and servants and were holy in their uh, own power and especially if proselytes to their religion see the the again the heathen would have to come up under our laws and that's going to happen in the kingdom they're going to come up under our laws our ways all right a proselyte means a newcomer so it's not like they're being joined into the nation but all right they're now following the law, statutes, and commandments, all right? What they believed before is now put away. They can't forward that. And King David is a good example of that because he conquered these various different nations and he took wives and concubines of them and he had, what, many children, all right? But he never allowed them to forward their gods. It was Solomon that did that, okay? And there's many times even in, you know, in the book of Nehemiah where Jake, they would go too far, all right? As a matter of fact, let's just type as Nehemiah, the uh, 13th chapter, but I'll just type in the Jews language or the ninth chapter. Just a little history. Nehemiah 13 and 23. In those days, I saw, all right, Jews that had married the wives of Ashdod, Ammon, and of Moab, and their children spake half in the speech of Ashdod, and could not speak in the Jews language, but according to the language of each people. See, this is out of order. This means that Jake was tripping. And again, this is what was happening. All right. As you go uh, um, back to the uh, book of uh, Genesis, the sixth chapter with the sons of God. Now, there was one language at that point. So they weren't, you know, messing up, you know, as far as teaching their children different languages. But what they were doing is bowing to the idols of the heathen. You see, when you read Wisdom of Solomon 14, it goes into that history. So idols have always been what bit us in the ass. So the Lord knew and understood who we were as a people. So he gave us a law. All right. Look, when you come into this land, obliterate all of these damn seven nations because they're wicked. All right. And it's that their culture is the problem with the world, because, again, it was the Hamites after the flood. All right through you know uh his son all right uh, uh you know as you get down you go to Cush the Cushites Nimrod those were all Hamites all right and 
as you read here, Nehemiah said, and I contended with them and cursed them and smote certain of them and plucked off their hair and made them swear by the most high saying, you shall not give your daughters to their sons, nor take their daughters unto your sons or to yourself. Did not King Solomon, the king of Israel, sin by these? So it was the sin that he actually dealt with the women? No, the sin was that he what? He took on to their gods. He built altars to their gods. He allowed them to continue their culture, their ways, which ultimately became a snare. See? Did not King Solomon, king of Israel, sin by these things? Yet among many nations there was no king like unto him, who was beloved of his God, and made God, and the Most High made him king over the Israelites. Nevertheless, all right, even him did outlandish women cause the sin. Let's look up this word, out, outlandish women. All right, so there's an order in how you're supposed to deal with the concubine. Now, fast forward unto today. All right, all of these women are out of, com completely out of order, especially the Israelite woman. They're the ones, all right, that uh, uh, are responsible for telling Israelite men, you got to go to church. You got to do this. You got to be, you go, you got to bow to my God. You got to do this with me. The word outlandish is nakaria, foreign, unfamiliar, harlot. All right, which the heathen got into temple harlotry and all kind of wickedness, man calamity disaster and that's what comes upon us as a nation all right when we leave off from the ways that the lord gave us man all right it says here and i will take her to be thy wife or to be married to her in a legal manner all right because there's a law to a concubine there's a law on how to deal with concubines okay again they don't have the rights as a Hebrew Israelite wife, but we still have laws and order on how to deal with these things. Okay, and it's all throughout the Bible. It says, it says, uh, the seven nations, for though it was not allowed for the Israelites to marry any of the seven nations of Canaan, nor indeed with any other nations in, uh, continuing their adultery, yet they might marry such as become their captives and servants, right? We're reading it. And we're holy. All right, their own uh, in their own power. All right, so these heathen would be under your power. They would understand. No, my God is false. All right, your way is the way, and especially if proselytes to the religion, in which this fair captives will become was to become before marriage, as if by some gathered from the following things done by her, though after all it was only a permission because of the hardness of their hearts. Yeah, 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 whatever. No, it was the law that the Lord gave Moses. All right, because when Israelite men or when any nation conquers uh, uh, women, all right, or any nation conquers one nation, they take their women. All right, this happened to the Israelites. All right. Let's see here. In the book of... Uh, Lamentations. All right. Lamentations five, as we went through, you know, the, our, the, the, the Babylonians taking us down. All right. Lamentations five and 11 in the NLT, the enemy, our enemies grape the women in Jerusalem and the young girls in all the towns of Judah. See, so when we were to take these nations down, all right, give you an example. All right, when we took down these different nations, this is in the book of Numbers. It says in verse Numbers 31 and 17, Now therefore kill every male among the little ones and kill every woman that have known man by lying with him. All right, but all the women, children that have not known man by lying with him, keep alive for yourselves. All right, because eventually they will grow up. All right, and get to a, a, a particular age that ultimately you can make a, a, a enter into, bring her in as a concubine. Point blank period, man. OK, so I just wanted to get into that because I see a lot of times this scripture in Deuteronomy, the uh, seventh chapter. All right. Is misused. OK, it's misused. And I just wanted to bring edification. Now, whether you're getting ready to watch this video and be mad and cry and scream and leave these long messages that 
you know, an Israelite man can't lie with a heathen woman and this Israelite come out and leave these long paragraphs. Yeah, you, you do that. You know, you, you, you can do what the hell you want to do. You know, the bottom line is, all right, as we were reading here, Yep, you would bring her into the midst of your house. Yep, she shall shave her head, either that she might be less engaging, her flowing locks removed from her. All right, pair her nails. Yep, boom. This and the former, I think it was order for her to fit to be his wife and was some sort of purification and emblem of her having renounced her heathenism, yep. Now, I remember doing a study how, you know, long nails and their particular hair, the heathen, they, they uh, you know, they use it for the for different heathenistic and idle practices. So when you took these particular heathen down, they would have to shave their hair and pair their nails, meaning they're renouncing their heathenism, man. Okay. So there you go. But I just wanted to, you know, uh, edify on that. Hopefully I'll edify Shalom.